Yeah, specifically, she says her prayer is, bring me back my brother, you asshole. <laughs> what? But to be specific, it says, bring me back my brother asshole with no punctuation to it, which to me had a real like do not touch Willie feel to it. You know, like, <laughs> I, I thought it would be foreshadowing and that like late in act three, we would literally just have his asshole show up. Oh, it would have been fantastic. Okay. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamecast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema so that the apocalypse will include some good news for us. I'm your host, Noah Lucians, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. Let's do this. Very excited. If we must. And unfortunately, Eli's going to be unable to join us this week, but in his stead, we're happy to welcome back friend of the show and co-host of the Opening Arguments podcast and Clean Up on Aisle 45, Andrew Torres. Andrew, welcome back, sir. Ooh. Hey, guys. Th thanks, question mark, for having yep. me back. Get excited. <laughs> this was awesome. No, it wasn't. You and I have very different definitions of awesome. Yeah, we sure do. Listen, so 300 and whatever of these, it changes the scale. Fair. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Jerusalem with a capital Z in the middle because it's a zombie apocalypse movie about zombies and the literal apocalypse. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's made by religious people. They're trying to do that, you know, hippy dippy message of all the religions are really the same if you think about it, which is true, except they're the same and wrong, not the same and correct about leather wing demon zombies on Yom Kippur. That's <laughs> not what they're all right about. But also not the same, right? Like the, the, the same if you don't think about, it. like even the three <laughs> Abrahamic yeah. faiths they focus on here don't really. Yeah, really hamstrung the movie. And Andrew, how bad was this movie? I I don't know. I, I watched this movie <laughs> twice, and I'm still not sure what the hell I watched. I, I don't know what happened. I don't know what the plot was. I don't know what the point mm. was. I don't know how the hell this is a god-awful movie, other than I can assure you it is indeed god-awful. This is such a weird grenade for Eli to throw in the room and then leave. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, I could see it. If Eli was going to be here for this one, it would make a lot more sense that he picked this one for us. There's also stuff where, I mean, I feel like we could use some, you know, insider Jew knowledge. Here yeah, I'll make these Goyim watch this movie in Jerusalem. Yes. They'll have no <laughs> idea what's happening. <laughs> this is what happens on Yom Kippur. They don't even yeah, know. Right, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> Alright, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Oh, God. Best worst. You left the air raid siren on the special effects for like 27 <laughs> fucking minutes of oh this movie's run. Like, it wouldn't stop it. Like, I get verisimilitude, everything, but like, there's an air raid siren playing in my headphones. Can we please stop it now? Right. Ugh. Yeah. Listen, you wouldn't want people to suspend that. You got to have them keeping their disbelief going while the leather wing demons are happening. You got to do it. <laughs> like you said, just have the Google Glass jet be like compensating for air. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Noise canceling eyeglasses would be the silliest technological leap we make in this film. So, OK, I was going to go with best worst girl talk. <laughs> All right. So this movie is written by two guys who have never like. I feel like the origin of this movie was two guys on an airplane and they tried to flirt with the two pretty girls uh, across the aisle and the girls didn't have any interest. And they were like, I hope you get eaten by demons. And the other guy <laughs> said, oh, that's a fucking movie right there, man. right there. You just came up. So like the first 50 minutes of this fucking movie is just these two girls on a vacation and they might as well start every conversation with, and Todd says we can't even pass the Bechdel test, you know? <laughs> Todd, Todd, did we? No, actually. <laughs> no. Well, actually, <laughs> can't. they did no, not. you didn't. <laughs> Never knew. So I'm going to go with best, best, awkward, smart technology. <laughs> so Andrew started to mention a second ago, they do the movie from the perspective of smart glasses. And so many times the character wearing the glasses had to be like, hey, Siri, not the time, not the time. Yeah. Inappropriate. <laughs> Please stop. Please stop. Well, and it was so meta because like we deal, you don't know this listener, but we deal that, with that constantly with Eli's glasses always chiming in on our records. So, yeah. 
all the more reason we needed his inside knowledge here. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, this movie is going to be a no hurry to get going. So I suppose we don't need to be either, but we'll be back in a minute with all the nauseous, shaky cam that is Jerusalem. So for those three reasons, that's why it was mathematically impossible for Ted Cruz to have standing. Hey, now, you listened to the opening arguments there? Yeah, great podcast. Love it, love it. Just going to pause it for a second. Sorry, yeah. So you're a listener too? You listen to OA? Yeah, yeah, no, I actually, I know Andrew and Thomas personally. They're friends of mine. <laughs> no way, so cool. Nice. Speaking of podcasts, uh, you know what I've been doing lately is not listening on speaker in a public elevator. Oh, okay, okay that. That took a quick turn. Thought we were just talking. Yeah, because you're the worst. Why don't you try wow. Raycon's Everyday Earbuds? Oh, what's... The, what are those? The, the, Raycon's Everyday Earbuds yeah. look, feel, and sound better than ever. With optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, these earbuds are so comfortable and they will not budge. Trust me. Raycon's give you eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life, and they're priced just right. You get quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. It's no wonder Raycon's Everyday Earbuds have over 50,000 five-star reviews. Okay. It, just, it feels like we're calling a weird timeout on the emotional content of our conversation that had happened with that turn. So, okay, well, while that's happening, I guess I'll ask, do the Raycons have any additional features that you have not mentioned yet? That's a great question. Raycon's Everyday Earbuds also have noise isolation, awareness mode, and ear tap functions. I know Illusions personally recommend them, and I love to wear them when I'm in public as part of a society, you know, like on a flight or in an elevator. Sure. Yeah, I see what you're doing. So uh, where can I get a pair? Just go to buyraycon.com slash gam today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash gam to score 15% off. Buyraycon.com slash gam. They're perfect for not being the worst in public. Yeah, got it, got it. All right, well, this was a really long elevator. Um, I'm going to go. So, check out the Raycon's Everyday Earbuds. They're perfect for not being the worst in public. Wow, okay. Meta, that's pretty funny. You're not even a patron? You're the worst. <laughs> you are. <laughs> I am. All right, guys, welcome to our first writer's room meeting. Now, I know, I know we agreed that since my dad bought the camera that we're going to use to make a movie, uh, but based on the message that I, I kind of feel like you guys might be getting a little bit carried away. Oh, well, how so? Really? Uh, well, look, for, for one, I agreed we could do a zombie movie because like, like it's relatively easy to do the zombie makeup, but you guys are talking about an army of winged demons invading Jerusalem, and yeah. we do not have the budget for that. Uh, I don't know. I think it'll be fine. See, it's a travel movie. I mean, sure, the demon army, it's going to be part of it, but the movie we had in mind, it's mostly about two girls on a fun trip getting to know themselves. A, a, f a fun trip to Jerusalem? To Jerusalem, yeah. Uh, all right. And and most of the movie would be about more human stuff, like who they're going to have sex with, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, and whose dick they're going to suck in nightclub bathrooms. Yeah, and deciding what to wear. Right, and what they smell like. Mm-hmm. Uh, what? You said that was... <laughs> okay. I mean, that, that, and also, I mean, that, that sounds a little boring, though. Like, where, where, where's the drama going to come from? Well, it's in Jerusalem, so I thought maybe we could touch on the tensions between... Palestinians and Israeli authorities, that kind of thing. Oh, Ooh, yeah, good idea. That's like um, that's like a college football rivalry type situation, right? Yeah, exactly like that. It would not be at all insensitive for us to portray it exactly like that because that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. So, like, we don't really even need the demons to show up until, until what, like 50 minutes into the movie, right? Shockingly close to that, yes. Uh, all right, but look, even half a movie with demons is way out of our price range, way out of our budget. Hmm. Ooh, what if it was found footage? Oh, good idea. That way the demons could always like be blurry or far away or seen only for mm -hmm. a split second or some combination of those three. Perfect. Uh, okay, that good idea. But I mean, like, won't we at least eventually have to show one demon on the screen? Sure. Yeah. But I'm sure by then the audience will be so into the movie that they won't even notice that it looks like somebody remembered it was a costume party on the drive over. Yeah, you're probably right. This movie's going to be awesome. So awesome. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown and we're going to open up this movie on so much black silence that I no shit had to check if my movie was paused twice. <laughs> I, I timed it. It's 18 seconds 18 long, and that's seconds. an eternity. Yeah. 
Right. I checked and I'm like, did I pause it when I was checking to see if it was paused then? But no. <laughs> okay. This is avant garde. I like this. This is so much better than what we normally do. <laughs> I mean, 93 minutes of that would have been fine. Right. Yeah. No, I love it when the 93 minute runtime is an exaggeration. Yeah. So then we get our like overhead projector credits thing. <sighs> and this results not to a Bible quote, but to a Talmudic reference. Right. This is Jeremiah 19 from the Talmud, not to be confused with Jeremiah 19 from the Bible, which is all about how God's going to make the people of Topheth eat the flesh of their children. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I mean, on that movie, it's kind too, of about so, that a little, a, a little bit. Yeah, but no, this is about a side quest in the in the Talmud <laughs> involving three different hell gates. Yeah, we get this three gates to hell thing a lot. And uh, spoiler alert: the other two gates don't matter. Right? That's, like you this wait is, for the yeah, rest of the trilogy. They're setting Andrew. up a trilogy. Yeah. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> no, seriously, I can't wait to watch the one that's under the ocean. That's going to be amazing. Yeah, no, J Jerusalem Two is in the works. Already. Oh wow! Yes. Awesome. So yeah, so and this is, of course, we realize within a few seconds that this is going to be a found footage film. Oh, fuck me. I, I'm sorry. Like, it, it, so time to take some Dramamine and right. And also remind everyone that you know, yeah, you could use your time machine to go back and kill Hitler or Trump or something, but you could also use it to murder those assholes that made the Blair Witch Project. So, you know. <laughs> this didn't have to happen, people. So there's the three gates to hell, we're told. There's one in the desert, one in the ocean, one in Jerusalem, right? Doesn't it feel like the IT department in hell should get on that? Or and like, or the I don't know, in heaven, somebody should fix that. Yeah. <laughs> it just seems like, it, you know, somebody would go up to God and be like, hey, you're you're talking about the Negev Desert and the Mediterranean, right? When you say the the desert and the ocean. It's, it just seems like we're really focusing on this one tiny part of the world, <laughs> Jerusalem. <laughs> it's all right there. You're not doing anything anywhere else. I've looked at like the flow charts. It's all that. Most of the world wouldn't know. Also, Jerusalem is kind of in the desert. I mean, yeah, that's <laughs> fair. Fair point. So, yeah. So, but our first found footage is going to be from 1972 when two priests captured footage of like a demon lady. <laughs> and, and I know I wasn't supposed to giggle, but like they're the little like foldy uppy paper mache kind of wings that <laughs> spring out when you pull the string. And every yes. time a demon sprouts wings in this movie, I just giggled delightfully. It looks yeah. like somebody opened a pop up book for children. Like yes, that's exactly right. what it looks yep. like when the wings come out. Sure does. Yeah. But yeah, so, so we see the demon lady. She pukes some worms. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Which is nifty. And then we see them try to exercise. We, they, they, they brought in people from all the different religions, meaning Christianity, Judaism, and, and Islam. All the religions. Yeah, all the, all the religions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. All different faiths, but they all agreed, you know, we have the same enemy, the devil. We're all pointing at the same thing. It's that hippy-dippy message. Yeah. We can't have Israel and Palestine, but we can agree on demon stuff together. That much <laughs> exactly. we can agree on. What the fuck? Coexist. So... <laughs> Although I'm not sure the motto of coexist works when you see the rabbi trade in his little peace pipe thing for like the <laughs> ceremonial gun. Yes, and right. Like, yes. <laughs> That's what's about to happen. They're showing us the rest of this video. And the, the person who they're convinced, is, you know, needs an exorcism, sprouts the wings like the pop up book and makes a scary noise. And a priest just shoots her in the face yep. right away. <laughs> She's chained down at this moment. Yeah. That's just murdering a lady. That's not. It sure exorcism. is. Right. They're like, look, we tried exorcisms from all three religions. You know, that's like we're, you know, the fuck science and medicine and all the other faiths. It's time to shoot this bitch. Guys, yeah. check, check, check on the three religions that ever <laughs> existed. So gun, <laughs> it's gun, right? That's the only, that's the fourth thing. Yeah. That's what they do. That's it. And then, okay, so that scene wraps up and we cut to the modern day where we're going to meet our hero, Sarah, when her dad gives her the latest in AR glasses technology. Yeah. The rest of this movie will be shown to us in the first person from these AR glasses. <laughs> that is the laziest way of bringing found footage into a found footage movie that I have ever seen. And we're only five minutes into it, right? This is already set in records. Honestly, I thought it was clever at first. I was like, oh, okay, it's going to be with the smart glasses perspective. I can see it. But no, they commit to the whole thing. It's 93 minutes of this. It's so dumb by the end. Yeah. yeah. What will they do when she runs? Oh, you just wait. Most of the movie actually will be her running. But yeah. 
But yeah, so we get the introduction of the AR glasses, which are great for signing into Facebook and MySpace. <laughs> so they advertised MySpace compatibility on them, on the box. Yep. What? This is 2015. Oh. You can get on Lycos, Alta Vista, whatever you want. <laughs> So, and also, by the way, the wake word for these are glass. She keeps going like glass, open music. I'm like, that's going to be problematic. But constantly be going like half empty, not found. Searching for houses shouldn't throw stones. You know, just what <laughs> dumbass word. Also, the Google Glasses things, they play music like at inopportune time, only at inopportune time. That's, yeah. that's, the, that's the funniest moment in the movie. Uh, I won't it know. is, yeah. <laughs> and every time they play something, I am just nostalgic for the newsboys. <laughs> oh, God, does it suck. Uh, so we see her playing with her glasses. Oh, there's a black cat because it's a horror movie. Uh, yeah, I don't know. She plays an AR zombie game, foreshadowing. Uh, uh. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Looked like a really shitty game, though. I played a lot of VRs. Yeah, a really slow, like, frame rate on those zombies. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then she gets a text from Rachel, and she, which says, hey, are you ready to take that trip to Tel Aviv that this movie is all about? And while she's doing that, correct me if I'm wrong, she's eating a bowl of cat food. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> Lucinda walked in the fucking door, and she says, she looks over my shoulder, and she goes, why is that lady eating cat food? <laughs> I actually wrote that down. I was like, okay, eating cat food. <laughs> interesting. And then I had, I was like, that can't be right. And we get a little bit closer to it. It was dry mini wheats, the cereal. Oh, God. Again, Just dry eat cat food. Ugh. Loose, yeah. <laughs> dry in a bowl, picking them up by hand and eating them. It was really wow. weird. It's like serial killer behavior. <laughs> also, I, I feel like we've elided over a major question that I, I mean, maybe, maybe I'm not up on my vacation spots or anything, <laughs> but like uh, Tel Aviv, nightlife, and beach town. Like, well, it's it, like the movie realizes it has to justify that, right? Because her friend Rachel sends her a thing. She's like, hey, open this video about how much great nightlife there is in Tel Aviv so that the audience will know. <laughs> <laughs> We watch a like a tourist ad for Tel Aviv here, yeah. And then she stops to reminisce about her dead brother and and cries in the bathroom. Not great crying. They could have just been going to like Aix en Provence and then you know diverted to Jerusalem for some reason. They just they do that anyway. Yeah. Why why have it? Whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe Tel Aviv is awesome. I have no idea. I, it could be. I don't. I don't want to malign Tel Aviv. I <laughs> yeah. just. It's not what I think of. I'm. I feel like I'm okay maligning Tel Aviv. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. So so Sarah and her dad go to pick Rachel up for the big trip. I have so many questions about all of this scene, but I think it's important to note here that dad starts by reading out his lines here at gunpoint, right? Yes. The script says, <laughs> I'm really excited that you're going on a trip with Rachel. Like, ugh. He seems like he's there against his will a lot. Yeah. 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 yeah so oh, we also meet Rachel's boyfriend. Don't worry. He'll <laughs> never matter. I like that as they're leaving, she's like, bye, Drake. You're bad at sex. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> I need to explain to our listeners that that literally happens. And you're just like, wait, what? And I did. That's how that's how Rachel says goodbye to her boyfriend. Like yep. as the car drives away. This felt personal. This felt personal. Bye, Drake. Saying. You're a lousy lay. <laughs> that's exactly her lines. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. So, th so they get to the airport. We watch them getting on the plane. She doesn't have her fucking Google glasses in airplane mode. I feel like that's going to be important, right? They are <laughs> connect network connected. But next question here, right? They're at the airport. It is clearly pitch black outside. And she says, it's almost two. And I'm thinking, 2 a.m. Your flight is at 2 a.m. Right. to Tel Aviv. Leaving okay. at 2 a.m. Yeah. Okay. All right, sure. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah. So they get on the plane and then love interest sits across from them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could have done best worst love interest. Oh, God. <laughs> He's the worst best. Absolutely. Kevin. Yeah. This is Kevin. And apparently. Kevin is supposed to have an American accent. This actor, I believe, is Israeli, and he's going for an American accent, and the filmmakers think he nails it, right? It's so good. And he's the he's he's the supposed to be like the fuck boy, so he's like, I enjoy traveling and studying ancient culture and talking in a fuck me cadence <laughs> like this. And they're all so charmed by him. Yes. He uh, has a prop hat. Okay. He's got he a does. prop hat. He has an him. Indiana yeah. Jones prop hat that he carries with him. 
Like Norm McDonald's celebrity Jeopardy oversized hat. It's so <laughs> silly. <laughs> yes. It's like hitting people in the next aisle. Yeah. I will say, though, the advantage of this first person camera perspective is that I now feel like I understand a little better what it's like to get mansplained to by Kevin. Oh, God. <laughs> right. Because for the rest of this scene, he's just mansplaining the plot or the premise rather to to Sarah, to the main character. Let me regale you with a story from the Talmud. Okay, you want to go fuck in the bathroom? My yes. club? No, all right, that, that, that didn't do it for you. So, all right, well, it's weird. Might take a little more than that, but just a little. So, okay, so they land in Israel. Kevin is just part of their crew now, right? He's just glommed on to them, and he invites them. He's like, "I know you guys are going to Tel Aviv, which is known internationally for its nightlife, but why not instead <laughs> we go to Jerusalem?" And they're like. Yeah, okay, that's probably a plot there somewhere, I would imagine. <laughs> now, now, Rachel pulls Sarah aside to say, like, are, are you, I mean, like, I get it, you know, we all want to tap that ass, but, like, are you sure we want to go to Jerusalem? And from this point on, like, I'm mostly Team Rachel for the rest of the movie. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I enjoyed that she was like, hey, can you step over here? And then they don't step anywhere. And she's just like, we're going to have a loud fight out loud about how dumb this guy is. Right. And they, yeah, they don't right wish there. for a fight. Yeah, they, <laughs> He's looking at me. I've made eye contact while I'm saying the sentence. And then, and then she says, you're such a slut, Sarah. You want to eat that ass. <laughs> okay. So is that something people say? Like, uh, no judgment about ass eating. I'm just saying, <laughs> is that what is known? Is that like a a positive physical trait that like you look at somebody do, do, and you're you like, know, like, I would like that to is be, a very edible ass, you know, mouth inside that ass area. I, I, I Yeah. <laughs> this was the line in the movie. And we're like seven minutes in, in which I began to suspect that maybe neither of the two script writers has ever been as far as, you know, second base with a lady. Mm. Like, and I mean, real second, like not that Cara Santa Maria, like freaky. Second yeah, that's base eating stuff. ass. Yeah. Cara Santa yeah. Maria's <laughs> second base. Yeah, It is. You want to tickle his calf. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, these, these writers were about as familiar with hookup culture as I am. <laughs> so it was not, <laughs> who's not really well done. So yeah. So, but they get in the cab, they're heading to Jerusalem. We get a, a little bit of tour guiding from the, from the taxi driver. Oh, right. Yeah. He's chewing a branch mm -hmm. that, that makes your penis better somehow. <laughs> Right. A natural male enhancement. Yeah. Israeli dick branch. I'm yes. surprised you guys don't know more about it. <laughs> IDB? Dude, I have a subscription. <laughs> okay. So. What's IDB? Yes. You just go to Roman. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so they head into Israel. So we shaky cam our way through an open air market. And this is where we meet. God, this is going to be a major character in the movie. Drunk homeless guy who calls himself King David. Yeah. Oh, Burger King. Burger King, sure. <laughs> this is this is Benny Hill, right? Like, oh you know, wow, he is <laughs> pre-death <laughs> Benny Hill, but yeah, but he's dressed like Burger. He's he's wearing yes. like the Burger yeah, King the crown, crown that you get yep. from Burger King. He sure is. Yeah, and he's like, hey, I'll help uh, show you guys around and maybe be comic relief later. And they're like, we're not interested. We're actually afraid of you. Apparently, bye. And okay, that would have been fine if they didn't make him literally mentally ill later and make me feel guilty about writing down Burger King and making it like, yeah, right. no. come on, man, just have it be a weird guy. So they make it to their hostel and the girls are like, wow, this is a very incredibly awesome hostel because this is a work of fiction. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they're, they're like, they're blown away by how nice the hostel is. Yeah, Siri immediately should have been like, I see herpes everywhere. Do not <laughs> check in. I can see the herpes. I can see it. <laughs> also, this is a weird note, but she, at one point they're walking up the stairs and she's like, you know, hey, glasses, take a picture. And she takes a picture of Kevin's ass. But Kevin has no ass. No. If it, like, there, 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 like there is literally no visible ass in the jeans that he's wearing. So what is the point of that? Like, I guess they wrote this thinking that they would cast a guy with an ass, but they couldn't afford one. I don't know. I don't know. The type of ass that you want to eat is maybe smaller. And right, right. Yeah, because you don't want to have a lot of appetite. Like a salad. I get it. Right, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> big, big bubble gets in the way of the eating. I don't know. Yeah, no, that makes sense. This is also where we meet Omar the fuck boy. Okay. He will be Rachel's love interest. I like Omar in this movie. Uh, He's the one guy I like. I actually like him. Okay, so He's very charming. The very first time we meet him, somebody has just spoken in Arabic or in Hebrew, I don't I can't tell, to 
Sarah. And he's like, what did, what did he say? And he says, he says you'll bring the smell of innocence. Okay, time to leave. Yeah, yep. time to leave. <laughs> it's not oh, exactly. Hey, Siri agrees. Siri said herpes and leave right now because smell of innocence. Get the fuck out. Yeah, it's not quite I can smell your cunt, but it's also not quite not that either. <laughs> yeah. you know? Way too close to that. Yeah, so Omar shows them to their rooms. I guess his his dad owns this hostel. He works at the hostel. He shows them to the room and he's like, hey, we upgraded you to the, you know, awesome suite. And and it's not a very good room at all. That's- I, I, just, I feel like in a youth hostel, this could be the ultra premium deluxe suite. Okay? That's oh, true. That is definitely <laughs> the turbo ultra. Be- That's so much nicer than every hostel I've ever stayed in. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no shit. Yeah, well, that's downright motel quality. Yeah. And also, to her credit, Rachel scores some hash from Omar while they're there. I, I, okay, nice I know. Team Rachel. Precious little cinnamon bun. But, like, is hash a thing now? Like, I I feel like I'm watching Pulp Fiction all over again. And, like, you know, John Travolta's <laughs> drug dealer is like, heroin's making a comeback. You know, is hash making a comeback? I, I, I If have... I'm ever in the Middle East and don't get hash, I'll be very disappointed. Yeah. All right. It's yeah, fun. That's... You make it into a little snake and you run the snake through the middle of your spliff. And you can also add some greens if you want to. Or mm-hmm. just by itself with tobacco. Or a little it, hash oil you can dump I don't think it's a comeback. I think it's, you know, it never left, yeah. honestly. It's been Andrew. here for years. I feel like you could be making up 100% of that. And I, <laughs> I would never, ever know. <laughs> oh, I, I should tell you about my homemade hash at some point. You would really wonder which part sure. of those were made up. Yeah. Sometimes you hammer it into a circle and you just put it right on your forehead, Andrew, is the best way uh, for you to do it, actually. <laughs> I'm just, I'm pining for my own innocence. At this point, I wrote in my notes, like, I'm going to need something to happen in this movie pretty soon. We are half an hour from anything happening. Yeah. <laughs> good, good luck. So Sarah and Rachel take a nap because they're so bored by this fucking movie. <laughs> and then we get Sarah. She's waking up. Rachel's already gone. It's like seven o'clock at night or something like that. So she goes, she knocks on Kevin's door. He's gone. She goes down to the front and everybody's gone except for one dude playing the mandolin mediocrely. Okay, so Hellgate, got it. Yeah, that, yeah. that, that is my nightmare. <laughs> Just everybody's gone and one, you know, bad guitar guy at the party being yep. like, clink, clink, clink. Let me tell you about Ivermectin now. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> so yeah, so he plays, and, and then the, the owner, Omar's dad, comes in and he's like, yes, he plays the mandolin to calm down the demons. And she's like, oh, I guess we've got to put a lot of foreshadowing in it since nothing's going to happen for the next 40 minutes, huh? <laughs> right. And then they spend way too long doing that foreshadowing. And he's like, oh, you don't believe in demons? You should believe in demons. You don't? And she's like, I believe in science. There is nothing that could happen to me in the next two acts that would possibly change that. <laughs> so, but just then, a chicken of burka shows up and she pisses her way to, to Sarah following her, right? She's like, your friend is in trouble. And, and so they wander off. She follows this woman down a, a, an alleyway and it turns out Nothing is happening in the movie at all. That's just Rachel <laughs> doing a racist voice in a burka. Yeah. Okay. So just to be clear, though, <laughs> Rachel's amazing. She got up early from their nap, snuck out, got a burka somehow. Yeah. And made everyone clear out the lobby of the hospital yeah. and the, all the areas of, yeah. just to do this prank. It's commitment to a bit. Right. I'm, I'm on board. That's Team Rachel. Stuff. Well, I think that she was in, she invited everybody to the hash party on the roof, but then she was like, except the mandolin guy. He can stay here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? We're, we're really going to set this hell scene. That's going to be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> also, I'm wondering how does a Jewish girl named Rachel from the United States get a burka very, like, I feel like you, you get a little <laughs> bit of like bad. You, like it's cultural appropriation, you know, like you're yeah, buying a bit. Per- Especially since she does the fucking voice. Yes. <laughs> I, yeah. Hopefully she didn't do the fucking voice at the burka store. Yeah. Right. But eventually they, they lead Sarah to this hash party on the roof and everybody dances quite hashily. Except for easily stoned Kevin, who, you know, I mean, if my experiences or anything to go by here, he's uh, he's about to go take a nice three hour nap while everyone <laughs> else stays up laughing about how awesome the hash was. <laughs> Oh, the ride home in the Uber was my favorite part. Same. With the driver being like, dude, how, you can't how much sleep. You, 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 can't you, you guys sleep went to the pot pizza place? How yep. much did he eat? How many, how many? So- <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now they're stoned. They're heading back to the hostel so they can get ready for a night on the town. And Sarah hangs back to take a picture. And damn it, if her backpack doesn't get stolen by a nine-year-old. 
Now, this will never matter to the film in any meaningful way, nope. but it will give us a chance to run through streets, shaking our camera up and down dramatically <sighs> for, I'm going to say, two and a half <laughs> minutes. She just runs through everything for no reason. Like so many <sighs> curtains just blindly diving through them. Yes, you're right. Smashes <laughs> through a plate of glass that two guys are carrying for no reason. Apple carts. <laughs> Swerves into an apple cart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I I have no idea how you found the apple carts or the glass or because I just have three minutes of like, uh, stop the ride. I need to get off. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, but I, I feel like I could catch a fucking nine year old, but I don't know. It's it's, it's much shorter <laughs> like no. But but he gets away. She falls down. She falls down a lot because that's the you know, it's an easy way to end the first person scene. Oh, she falls down and drops her glasses and now they cut back on later. But she sits down to be angry. We get a growly, barky dog because we need a jump scare here to distract us from the fact that nothing has still happened in the movie. <laughs> And the dog's are just like, relax, stop diving through curtains. I will find <laughs> the way back to the hostel for you. What are you doing? <laughs> so, okay. So now we head down to the lobby where we're going to go out for a night on the town, but everybody's engrossed by something on the TV. It turns out there was a murder lamb. <laughs> yeah. This doesn't have anything to do with the non-plot either, does it? I mean, like... I guess if you really know the Talmud, maybe you're like, oh, the murder of the lamb, you know, or something. I'd have no fucking idea. <laughs> oh, I bet. Yeah. The blood oh. of the lamb on the side of the thing means something, something, something. Yeah. Right. I uh, guess they were going for that. The way they set it up, though, is just these guys watching the TV being like, there was a murder, but it was bullshit. Uh, yeah, it was a lamb, not a human, which is a really weird way to say that. And they're like, all right, yeah. let's go. Out. We don't use the word murder when it was the lamb. Yeah. And also, like, why was everybody, because they're all engrossed in the TV. They're like, oh, it's fucking, it's time for lamb murder tonight. Everybody's favorite right. show here in Jerusalem. <laughs> what? <laughs> lamb Chop Play Along, really different show there. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it still ends with a song that never ends, though. But, um, oh, nice. <laughs> So, but then we go out for a night on the town for realsies this time, but we run into Burger King again. Yep. Right. <laughs> He's like, Hey, I'm still in the movie. And we're like, well, we weren't, weren't expecting that. He's like, Oh, you'll be shocked at how much of a, a role I play ultimately. <laughs> yeah. But he's there to warn them that they're in a horror movie. They don't believe him because so little has happened so far. They're like, no, there'd be something up, up to this point. I think we're in a rom-com. Aren't we? <laughs> right. It's an episode of Party of Five. I'm yeah. really sure. <laughs> so, All right. Which one of us is meat killing the Burger King? I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know. Can you do it? I'll eat his ass. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, so we get to the bar. Bar has a brass band, which is like, I, 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 that's the sign of a happening nightclub, right? It's a really good live band, honestly. It really was. Yeah. <laughs> so, there's also this really weird moment where Omar turns to Sarah and she says like, so you and your friend, how Jewish are you? Like on a scale of Moishi to Eli, like <laughs> <laughs> what was the point of that? Goes like, am I going to get blown tonight or what? You know? Well, we're going to find out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are. Well, we don't, we don't know if Omar gets blown, but we will find out some blowjob stuff. Type, <laughs> take that foreshadowing. <laughs> All right. So, oh, and this is where we run. They, while they're at the nightclub, they run into a couple of Israeli army guys who would also like to drink with them. Right. Uh, and I, you know, okay, I'm team Rachel and all, but like super dick move when you're like trying to hook up with the Muslim to invite over the occupying Israeli <laughs> army <laughs> for shots. Yes. Yeah. She's yes. like, shots for the Israeli army guys. Omar, they're cool, right? And he's like, yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome. I'm a Muslim guy in Jerusalem. They're the fucking yeah. best. Oh, I love yeah. these guys. <laughs> Great. I would love to drink with them now. <laughs> So, okay, so now we get, so Kevin puts on her glasses at one point. So now we're looking at her through Kevin's eyes and he tells her how beautiful she is. We get this movie's writer's idea of, you know, how you convince a girl to fuck you at a nightclub. And she's like, oh, well, you, you know, you said the magic words. Come on, we're going to the back, you and I. The bathroom, they go to the bathroom. <laughs> it's so unpleasant. I watched the, the whole scene. I just, I was making, do you hear the, the gestures that I, and like the posture I have? My shoulders are all tight. I don't like it. She takes him into the men's room. I wanted somebody to be taking a noisy shit in the stall next door, right? <laughs> oh, but she's going to blow him in the stall or whatever. And while she's getting ready to blow him, 
he's uh, he's got the glasses on, so he's like scrolling through her Facebook friends and roasting them. <laughs> and everything about this scene is wrong. Like, she, there's no way Rachel would just like hand over her unlocked Facebook to a you know guy she's never met, and then he's uh, you know about scrolling. to get about to get the dick wet, and like he's just like, no, I'd like to you know take a look at your entire private history here. So weird. Everything is bonkers about this, but yeah, no. Well, and it's so lazily done because like she's just about to blow him and he goes like, mm-hmm. hey, this is, who's this dumb asshole guy in the in the wool cap and you're, I, I bet he's an asshole and I hope he's dead. <laughs> who's this friend of yours that you're hugged up to, uh, where are you going? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kevin- and she's like, that's my dead brother. <laughs> She, we're yeah, shutting down the beach. <laughs> yeah, she, I, here's the lesson. I, that's yeah. why you never talk when that's about to happen. Thank you. Right, if you say yep, nothing, thank you, it can't Keith. go wrong. You shut the yeah. fuck up. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, right. So she's like, nope, give me back my glasses. No beach for you. And he's like, aw. And, and then she like storms out of the whole club. She goes to tell Rachel, you know, he made fun of my dead brother mid blow job. So I'm leaving. And she's like, oh, OK, well, I'm going to hang out and fuck Omar. <laughs> so. uh, uh, Rachel is sitting on the bar and Omar is, I believe, motorboating her breasts at the bar. Like, I think you're right. Weird. <laughs> it's this is uh, maybe Jerusalem is the place to go nightclubbing. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Do you ever do a bit too far and have a beach get shut down for you? No. Nope. That happened to me once. It was the worst. And I was like, I just leaned all the way and I was doing jokes. I was sn- I was killing it. Nope. Worst no, idea ever. Just, yep. Yep. You shut just up. shut the fuck up. All right. Well, so far, this movie is about almost blowing a guy in a dank, creepy basement toilet. And it also feels like almost blowing a guy in a dank, creepy basement toilet. So I feel like we've earned a break, but we'll be back in a minute with even more. Jerusalem. You're so hot. Let's do this. Uh, you're so hot. Follow me, stud. Ooh, in the bathroom stall. I like it. Toilet paper low. Would you like me to order Charmin? What? Siri? No, cancel. Siri, sorry. Sorry. Ready for takeoff. Mm, Okay, well, let's see that penis. I want you so bad. That surface is filthy. Do not sit down. Would you like me to order Lysol? Siri, cancel. Do not offer to order me anything, okay? Okay. Have a good evening. Sorry. Distracting. Okay, sexy talk. Just uh, just need to warm back up. Yes. Uh, Please blow me today. Blowjob, also known as fellatio, from the Latin fellari, to suck. Siri, stop it. I'm really sorry, really, really sorry about that. No, it's fine. Uh, we just, we just gotta, you, you know, get the, get the momentum back. Uh, okay, yeah, a falare time. Mm, yes, lock eyes with me. One person recognized Sarah Pullman. One mutual friend, Dave Bonner. You, you know, know my, my cousin, cousin Dave? Dave? Yikes! Siri, turn off. Turn off. Um, so he's, he's my third cousin. I feel like that's, she's, she's gone. First cousin. Don't lie. Siri, damn it. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back for more of this shit. When we last left our hero, she was leaving the nightclub in a huff and heading back to the hostel. But damn it. If the navigation in her AR glasses isn't on the Fritz now. (laughs) I did enjoy her being like, glasses, glasses, you piece of shit glasses. Fucking do the map better. And then she's walking. She gets lost here and she just walks down increasingly tiny little dark alleys. They're darker each time and smaller each time. Yeah, the creepier the better is her philosophy. Yeah. I mean, this is this is the first, you know, horror movie logic we see in, in action, right? Like, <laughs> I'm lost, head for the crypts. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a left down this well, I think. Yes. I'm gonna climb down this. Hmm. Go back. Second smaller well. There's a well off the well. <laughs> so yeah, so she's lost. She's she's in this creepy alleyway, and then she hears a growling lion. <laughs> right? That's the only way I can describe the sound effect. Now, we'll later find out that that's the demon noise or whatever, but <laughs> much later. It's going to be a while. 
But Kevin catches up with her. He's like, I followed you down the well that was off the edge of that well. <laughs> what are the fucking odds that I'd find you here? But at any rate, I caught up with you and I can take you back to the hostel now. And also, I'm sorry for roasting your dead brother on, on Facebook. So are yeah, we still st uh, <laughs> doing... No, no, no obviously no. Because this is yeah. a pretty isolated... Honestly, this would be a way, way better place for a blowjob than the bathroom. This is a lot cleaner than our last <laughs> spot. <laughs> and, and he's still not sorry about like going through all her private shit, right? No, like, uh -uh. Yeah. no but so, okay. So she's like, no, you know, I really need to get over people making fun of my dead brother randomly in the middle of blowjobs. That's really on me more than you. He's like, on you. That's what I was thinking the same. Yes, this is a man wrote this movie. <laughs> 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 so they get back to the hostel. And Kevin's like, so do you want to do you want to still fuck? And she's like, no, yes, I do. I do yeah. still want to fuck. Let's fuck. Yeah. And she says, do me, Indiana, because <laughs> he's from Indiana, which is. Well, no, Indiana Jones. Yeah. He's, an, he's archaeologist. an archaeologist. Yeah. yeah. Oh, OK. I thought he was from Indiana. And then I was like, dude, you got to say, who's your daddy right now? You have to say who's your daddy. <laughs> Say shit. <laughs> I guess he learned to don't say shit from earlier, but still, yeah, come on. Who's no, your, that's, that, that's, a, that's a small one. Uh, yeah. Low risk. Yep. I feel like you go. <laughs> I just have to say that was more writing effort than any of the screenwriters put into any <laughs> scene in this movie. Uh, so we get a, a rare gam boob moment. Oh, we do. Remember Jackie's boob updates? Yeah. I remember those. Ah, oh, oh, those, those were great. Those were awesome. So, okay. So that night she wakes up. Oh, Jackie J. Yeah. 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 Hey, Jackie. Would always find the boobs that we were looking at. Jackie J. Make it happen. So, <laughs> so okay. So that night she wakes up and, and he's staring out the window all pensively. Right. And she's like, hey, what, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm just listening to far off screams and growls. <laughs> Hey, Kev, you staring angrily into the distance after the sex we just had moments ago? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, just listening to some distant screams. And she's like, oh, cool. That, that, that's not the best answer. That's not no. the best answer. <laughs> you can just lie about You can stuff, lie you know? in this one moment. That'd be great. <laughs> Make fun of my, roast my dead brother would be better. Yeah, honestly, right. right now. Really? So he's like, actually, like, let me send you some links to demon shit that I found on the dark web. Uh, and this motherfucker uses research like every Trumper. Yes, right. I was done. researching on <laughs> the dark web. Yeah. yeah, you were you were watching YouTube videos. Yep. Yes, and he was. That's the thing is he pulls up a fucking YouTube video. But it's the exorcism video from the beginning, which apparently the movie forgot it had already showed to us. <laughs> Inexplicable. Yeah, we watched this whole fucking stupid video again. And she's like, so... um. Are you telling me you think Jerusalem is full of zombies? He says, full of zombies, exactly. And the Jewish cabal is hiding it. Cool. And you talked us into coming with you? <laughs> <laughs> Hoping to get your ass eat? Fuck you. This worked out pretty well for me so far. I mean, get my ass eat, then get my brains ate. You know, it's going to be a, gonna be a great time. So you get, get working for both ends. That's That's the key. So, yeah, she's like, well, you know what? It's late. I don't have the spoons for demon Nephilim conversations. I'm going back to my room. Right? I, I, it, was it only me that like Nephilim stuck out as kind of like a weird word, right? Like, cause you know, you get angels and demons and that kind of thing. But like Nephilim, those are the like nine foot giant, you know, yes. children of angels and men. Yes. The, but like, it just felt weird in that list. There. Yeah. They're frost giants, basically. Yeah. yeah. Right. right. Exactly. Sure. Why not? I was excited. I was like, if we get to see these fucking Nephilim up close, I'm be really happy. We do for like less than half a second. Yeah, is the budget uh, they had to make. Should a I have questions? Nephilus, <laughs> Nephilus. I don't know what the singular is. Nephilito. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Nephilito. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. So the it's the next morning. She's sitting in the lobby on the uh, hammock eating an apple as loudly as it is possible <laughs> to eat a goddamn apple. That was cr why would you have us hear all that for so loud and so long? It's crazy. I don't know. It's like a wood chipper. <laughs> it, was, it was Eli on our business call. Yes, level right. Of loud. right. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, so Omar shows up and Rachel shows up and they're like, OK, tell me all about uh, the fucking, you know, tell me about Kevin's dick. And I'm like, 
can we maybe do a fucking zombie movie instead? No, because we're 37 <laughs> nope. minutes into this thing at this point and nothing has happened yet. But Sarah's like, yeah, I'll tell you all about it. But Omar has to leave. And Omar's like, well, I want to know about his dick too, but fine. <laughs> <laughs> fine. And then she's like, hammock wrestling and dives <sighs> to the hammock and they fall. <sighs> yep. And, and the dialogue that these script writers put into Sarah's mouth is dirty girl. Yes. Dirty yes. girl. Yes. Yeah. It just felt oh, you so dirty girl. creepy <laughs> all the way down. <laughs> all right. So now Omar is going to take them out sightseeing. I know you were thinking, are we even going to get a sightseeing montage? Don't worry, listeners. I mean, I mean one not from a taxi cab. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. So, okay. And also they introduce and don't have the balls to stick with a bit right here where when she fell out of the hammock, her glasses got fucked up and now they're just randomly showing, like covering her vision with Japanese cat videos, <laughs> right? They'll just randomly play in the middle of her field. That is a deadly potential drawback to this technology, but okay. Yeah, the, the programming required to make that possible is insane. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. That means that there has to be some kind of like, automatic button that you press or something you could accidentally say. Yeah. Uh -huh. But also just think of like how a, a, not just a good movie, but like a non shitty movie could have used everything they've built up to this point. Right. Like, yeah. so Sarah's actual glasses have been stolen. She must wear the Google glass for the rest of the movie in order to see. And it's now unreliable. Yeah, right? like I did. Oh, there's so much. You that was good. Demons pop up and and have her not know. Like, is that just a crazy artifact? Or, yeah, but no, they do none of that. Yeah. Nope. No, <laughs> cat video. Cat video. <laughs> there's one time when they're almost clever about it at one point in the movie, and that's it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So okay. So Omar takes him around, and, and like, and and he still doesn't like that occupying army in his town. And, and Rachel's like, "You, you got to get over that, man. You've just been going on and on." <laughs> oh, it's about the that. worst because they're like, "Hey, <laughs> army guys, Israeli army, so fun." And they're the army guys are like, "Hey, ladies, this is this is reason not apartheid. We're not doing that." No more. <laughs> has to explain that. Yes, the fuck it is. We're we're moving on. <laughs> sure is, but so they they walk by those guys, and then Kevin. Stops and he goes, hey, what is this building? Is it going to come in like later on in the movie and be important? Should we exposit about it a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> and Omar says, yeah, that's an old asylum. That's where they put people when they get Jerusalem syndrome. Okay. Was I the only one that that took down a long Wikipedia yeah, rabbit trail? Yeah, yeah, me too. It's just, you know, TLDR, not a thing. Yeah. Not a real, the DSM does not have Jerusalem syndrome as a real thing where you see stuff from Revelation or whatever <laughs> because you're in Jerusalem. Nope. Yeah. He's real. like, he defines it as like, we, we see stuff from the Bible and it makes you lose your mind. And we're like, oh, we call that Christianity in America. Right, right. <laughs> But yeah, Andrew, I did go down that rabbit hole with you. Long story short, the SPLC has listed me as a hate group now. So we're going <laughs> to do a little letter writing campaign. Uh, so yeah, so so we... I'm on it. <laughs> we do some shopping. Weird job. We watch Muslims pray. Kevin buys Sarah a dress. This will never matter. And I don't think she'll ever even wear the damn thing in the movie. No. They go see the Wailing Wall. Right? Because when you're in Jerusalem, you got to go make a wish and throw it in the wishing well. Oh, uh, yeah. And, <laughs> and Sarah writes down, I, uh, I'm i just going to wish for God to resurrect my dead brother. No big deal. Probably won't happen, you know, anytime. It's, uh, I'll forget about this now. <laughs> cool. Yeah, specifically, she says her prayer is, bring me back my brother, you asshole. <laughs> what? But to be specific, it says, bring me back my brother asshole with no punctuation to it, which to me had a real like do not touch Willie feel to it. <laughs> I, I, I thought it would be foreshadowing and that like late in act three, we would literally just have his asshole show up. Oh, it would have been fantastic. Okay. Honestly though, God does a bit of a monkey paw. We'll get to it. Yeah, no, he does. He absolutely does. Actually, he does exactly a monkey paw. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So then they go to check out, quote, the biggest artificial cave in the Middle East. They, they mean mine when they say that. <laughs> yeah. So they go and they get their like lights, uh, their, their hard hats with the little lights on them and everything. Also, there's a suit of armor at that place for no reason. Don't worry. That's foreshadowing as well. 
right? That'll matter later. Was that the like coal miner suit of old time times? <laughs> <laughs> A fucking nope. full plate of armor situation? <laughs> sure the fuck wasn't. There was literally no reason for it to be there. I mean, that's how we invented jeans, right? So that, like, no, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> So yeah, but but they're very impressed by the mind's depth. I, so we sure are deep now. But Kevin comes across some demon glyphs and he needs to get the fuck out of there because holy shit, is it boring and we're halfway through the movie at this point. <laughs> okay, it's boring and he's like, we need to liven this up. I'm going to go read books at the archive to learn about demons. Yes, I'm going to go to the library to fucking ramp up the action in this movie. <laughs> I See, now would have been a perfect time for the little Japanese cat video Thank you. to pop up. Yes, exactly. <laughs> they needed to commit to the fucking bit. So, okay. So we cut back to the hostel. Rachel and Sarah are recapping the day. Yep, Rachel in a towel. Yes, the highlight of the film. Yeah. <laughs> And Sarah at this point is like, you know, I really think we should leave Jerusalem and and get on with our vacation. And I wrote in my notes, I want that too. Maybe Tel Aviv will have a plot in it. <laughs> <laughs> but just then, Kevin bangs on the door. It turns out that he's seen the plot and he's terrified of it. <laughs> he did his own research and he figured out the apocalypse is happening yeah. when he went to the library. <laughs> his exact line here is, there's not going to be a tomorrow night. And I'm sorry, I just started giggling uncontrollably because I was thinking, you have to think of Groundhog Day, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, what if there isn't a tomorrow? There wasn't one today. Yeah, there wasn't one like, today, yeah. Kev? Kev Ryerson just punched him in the face. <laughs> oh, God. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Billion, crazy billionaire remake. <laughs> so, yeah, but, but he, he's like, she's like, well, we're going to leave tomorrow night. And he's like, there won't be a tomorrow night. And I'm like, then why leave? Right? You're going to spend the last day of your life in traffic? Go get blown in a nightclub or something, man. Come on. He's just angling for the ass eating at this point. Come on, man. The the end of the world, so we might as well eat some ass. That's pretty convenient, right, Kev? Come on. (laughs) So, yeah. So, he's screaming and yelling about how they have to go quick before the demons come or whatever. And then Omar and his dad show up and they're like, "Mm, Jerusalem syndrome. We're going to have to lock that motherfucker up for a little bit. So, they take him away to uh, to the asylum. For Jerusalem syndrome. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so Omar comes back in to fill Rachel and Sarah in. And he's like, yeah, you know, um, he had the Jerusalem syndrome. So we locked him in a tiny little cage. He'll be fine. And they're like, oh, yeah, no, I'm sure he'll be fine. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And also, I mean, again, uh, item number 11 billion on the list of like why found footage movies are stupid. Like this forces you into the amazing cinematic decision of having the action occur elsewhere and having somebody else come back and explain it to you. Well, right. Like, and it's a visual medium, people. Sorry. Right. Yeah. But <laughs> it, well, and this found footage movie doesn't even do the like occasionally cut to like a, a security camera or the camera from the AT. It's all from her glasses, you know, with the exception of the opening. Yep. So but Rachel now is she's she's ready to go to. She's like, you know, as soon as Yom Kippur is over, we'll leave and see if we can find a plot in Tel Aviv. So that night, Rachel goes up to the roof where they were smoking all that hash in hopes of catching a glimpse of the plot. And she does. Yeah, she actually does. She's up there and a fighter jet flies through and drops a bomb in the middle of Jerusalem. Who would have thought you would see (laughs) combat aircraft in Jerusalem? And an explosion, no less. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Okay, just to be clear, though. The Israeli military, we're going to find out that the apocalypse actually is happening. So Mm -hmm. presumably that military group found out that an apocalypse is happening (laughs) and demons were coming out of the one gate in Jerusalem. So they were like, let's drop like a a few bombs, see how it goes. One bomb. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So Sarah runs to grab Rachel and go down to the TV, but it's in Hebrew, damn it. So they don't know what's going on now. Didn't they speak Hebrew in Act One? I, 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 I never mind. I think they did. So okay. So most of the rest of this movie is going to involve like people screaming in a foreign language and Rachel and or Sarah saying, "What are they saying?" Right. That's that's most <laughs> of the rest of this film. Yeah. <laughs> Have the smart glasses translate it for you. Oh, that, there you uh, go. You could have done something with that. that. Would have been smart. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we watched that for a fucking while, 
And then Omar runs and grabs his gun. And then the Israeli soldiers from before show up, right? They come knocking on the door of the hostel and they're like, we're evacuating the, the two. Yes. They've, they've befriended the two in Jerusalem. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're like, we're going one hostel at a time and we're evacuating the city. And we're expositing the emergency to one hostel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Everybody exactly. gather around. Yeah. So he's like, all right, they're going to go. They're about to close the gates of the city. So you have to follow me if you want to live on three. But he doesn't. He doesn't like establish a cadence. He goes like one, <laughs> two, three. You know, it's it's like like I don't I don't pull this flex often, but like this guy would be terrible at my job. This guy could not do the five count. <laughs> Hold on, everybody, gather back in. No, 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 no. We're gonna go on four. It's gonna be uh, on one, two, three, one, and then we two, all go three. B. B. No, right? Yeah. No, I, no, no. We're doing, I'm no, doing the count. I, only a monster goes on three. <laughs> it's the apocalypse. We don't have time for this. So yeah. So they run out of the hostel and yes, we fucking first person shaky cam run for like for like minutes here. Right. But eventually they run by the asylum where Kevin is. And she's like, hey, guys, Kevin is a major character. Like we introduced him early in act one. I feel like we should stop here and save him. Right. And everybody's like, no, because they uh, just said. Gates closing, right. right? Like what? What part of those two words did you not understand? Yeah, is he your like really, really good friend from a long time ago? Yeah, we met on an airplane and we fucked yesterday on the way over here. <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost blew in a pretty shitty bathroom. So that's pretty good friends. But one of the soldiers reluctantly says, "Okay, you have three minutes to rescue Kevin. I'm not giving you four. Timer starting now." <laughs> So they go into the asylum. Now, the plan here is to rescue Kevin and only Kevin. Yeah. The entire city has been overrun by demons. They're like, okay, oh, not this asshole. No, fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. She's like, no, no, that's not Kevin. Skip, skip, skip. Yeah, exactly. So, but we, then we see a zombie growling its way down the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this, this was funny. Because the zombie just like stops and looks at him. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey, uh, okay. Are, you're vomiting. Are you normal worm vomiting or was that demon worms? <laughs> you have to tell us. Okay, now you're running. Are you going for a demon tackle or a regular tackle? He's a demon. He's a demon. And they should. Yeah, no, and we should, by the way, point out that this is an asylum as a man by like a sheltered white lady from 1936 or something, right? <laughs> but then we, so we watch Sarah run around this asylum for a while yelling Kevin. Then her music kicks in. <laughs> Again, great time for a fucking cat video, you know. But yeah, the the music cuts it. There's no reason for this. It doesn't add tension. It just is kind of annoying, I guess. And that's the point of it. I wanted that to keep happening. The music just yeah, punch, right. shooting in whenever it's the worst. Yeah, yeah, I, that was fun. I laughed a little bit. Again, they refuse to commit to the fucking bit. But yeah, but the soldiers are like, no, we didn't find Kevin. We checked one whole floor. And she's like, I'm going to check the other floor. And they're like, well, you're on your fucking own. Right. So she wanders off. She finds Kevin. But of course, he's locked. His cell is locked. And he's like, go check the office for the keys. And she's like, right. The office. I intuitively know where that is. Luckily. <laughs> <laughs> so she runs to the office. She's looking for the keys. And we hear a, a zombie growl. And she... <laughs> She goes to duck by this desk. We see the zombie with his little tiny wings, and the wings are so comically small, right? It's like a, it's like your your kid dressed up as an angel for Halloween kind of sized wings or whatever. It's a really bad demon zombie. Like you, by looking at it, it's like a deer trying to walk for the first time as a demon <laughs> zombie. I feel like you're just like, yeah, okay, that's fine. Just push him over and go. Right, I feel like cell. I can take that one. Yeah, exactly. But so she ducks behind the desk and she's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And there's somebody already hiding under the desk. And he's like, hey, you want to, oh, my God, silently, like inside voice. <laughs> but it turns out it's Burger King. Yeah, Burger yep. King is back. And 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 I just want to figure out logistically, like we're seeing this from the found footage glasses perspective. But there's no way you could get both Burger King and Sarah under that desk, right? Like, yeah, that's that's not happening. <laughs> no, sure as hell isn't. So he, she's like, oh, I know you. And he's like, yeah, I know you too. Let me um, let me tell you my backstory right quick. She's like, really? Is this the best um, best moment for you? Yep, best moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to give a whole speech. It's going to be really long. It's going to be really long. <laughs> I'm going to explain that. I'm, I'm going to explain that. Remember the video that you've watched twice now, very recently? I'm going to explain that whole thing. I'm the kid from that, just so you know. Yep, that was my mom that got shot in the prologue video. Yeah. 
And she's like, cool. No, I believe in demons now way before you said anything because I saw one. <laughs> <laughs> we can one just leave. You know, the back, it's, none of this matters. There's one in the hallway. <laughs> well, and he decides, he's like, you know what? I'm sick and tired of these demons. I'm going to go fight one of them. And so he runs off. Now, of course, we don't see anything happen. We hear off screen him fighting a demon. He wins. Right. We will see him again. Oh, yeah. I wanted so bad for them to show us that. Yes. Deep Burger King beating the fuck <laughs> out of this awkward, clumsy <laughs> demon. Hey, so they're like deer that just learned to walk. It's really not yeah. very hard at all. <laughs> no, I, I just kicked it in the face and I kept going. <laughs> Uh, I'm picturing Tom Cruise from the firm. Yes. But, <laughs> <that Wilson Bradley? laughs> but then again, I picture that whenever I can't see a fight sequence take place. Right. So, yeah. No, that's fair. Oh, he take drops the out of diabetes. The ceiling. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it is, remains the most unintentionally <laughs> hilarious scene in all of cinema. All right. So, okay. So then the demon attacks her. Well, Jesus. We just, we get a series of. Does it? Demon, blurry, disjointed speed cuts, right? Yeah. And she gets away. D Demons attack in abruptly edited sequences generally. That's, yeah, that's right. That's what we learned. Right. <laughs> right, yeah. She gets away because he's so blurry that we can't, uh, who the fuck knows. But she goes back to, to Kevin's cell. She goes to unlock it. She's so nervous that she can't fit the key into the lock. And he's like, look at me, look at me. Now you're calm enough to do it. And she's like, I am calm enough to do it. Wow. Let's, what are the odds that, that that would happen? And I just have to say, these are not the jingly keys I was expecting <laughs> when I signed up for game this week. Okay? You're on the spectacular, man. This is what happens. So, okay. So she lets him out. Kevin valiantly darts ahead of her and hopes she can keep up as he leaves the yeah. asylum in a run. <laughs> So, but yeah, so they get out. They have the weird like argument where she's like, no, my navigation is telling me to go left at the next. And you're trying That's to go a well. right. This That's a weird. You're looking at a well again. You want us to go down the well. Also, like she's like, we got to go left. And they're supposed to be like an ominous sound, but it's very clearly like a honking, like a <laughs> hink, hink. It's like, that's a pretty ominous hink, hink. So I don't know. Right. And yet Burger King shows up. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he like dives off a tall building into some hay, jumps on a bike, <laughs> slides right up next to him. And he knows how to get to the city gate to get him out. Which, by the way, wasn't to the left, right? It wasn't the way her, right. she was trying to take him. <laughs> right. Now, but luckily there's a rack of bikes for everyone right there. Weird that everybody who is rushing to the gate wouldn't have already picked these up. But yeah, so we get on bikes. We do shaky cam on bikes for a little while. And again, uh. Kevin is darting forward going try to keep up Sarah good luck <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so she falls down because she's a lady and because chivalry is dead but eventually they get there right they get to the gate but the gate has already been closed and there's a huge crowd of people all being like we don't want to be eaten by zombies and it's like a bunch of Israeli soldiers going yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's you that's, you sound like that. <laughs> that's what you sound like <laughs> And then so and and Burger King walks up to the gate and they shoot him for getting too close to the fence. And I'm like, that is so Israeli of them. Right. That's just... <laughs> but he, he's a white guy. What the fuck? I was like, yeah. So messed up. But he, he doesn't just like run up to the gate. He like slow. He takes like two steps towards it and he takes out a tiny little like Bart Simpson slingshot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they're like, don't don't take out that slingshot. Blam! Right in the head. Remember, because he said he was King David, and that's why he went. Right. Yeah, exactly. And they just <laughs> shoot him to death right on the spot. <laughs> it was right around here when I started to think that maybe this movie isn't so pro-Israel. Yeah, after right, all. right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. A lot of the jokes that are occurring to me right now are only funny if Eli says them. So instead, we're going to pause for a quick break. First, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Does the movie have time for rising action, a climax, falling action, and a resolution? Will any of the characters ever make a good decision? What good did Kevin think was going to come from roasting her Facebook friends mid blowjob? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the somehow still eventless conclusion of... Jerusalem. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Hey, podcast listener. I'm former mental health care skeptic, Heath Enright, and I'd like to offer my reformed thoughts about therapy. If we have anyone listening out there who has the same initial instinct that I had, here's a quick explanation of how I changed my mind on it. Really simple. I tried it. Tried some therapy, like a good skeptic does. And it made a difference. My good friend, Eli Bosnick, described it as Checking under the hood of your brain, 
just like you obviously would with a car or with your physical health. I wasn't feeling any extremely acute symptoms, but I definitely was struggling with letting my thoughts devolve into focusing on problems instead of focusing on solutions in my everyday life. I imagine lots of people have that issue from time to time, and a therapist can help with that. They can help you become a better problem solver, making it easier to accomplish your goals, big or small. Going in, I wasn't expecting any big results, but as it turned out, I was wrong. And I'm happy about being wrong because now I'm happier and I'm feeling more confident about tackling this whole existence thing here in the universe. So if you're thinking about checking under the hood, better help is a great option. It all happens entirely online, so it's convenient and accessible, even during a pandemic or a Michigan winter. You can get matched with a therapist super easily by filling out a quick survey, and if the match isn't quite right, you could switch therapists anytime. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash awful today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash awful. Take a quick look under the hood. May I have your attention, American tourist? This is very important. Hold on, let me finish my taco. I'm afraid that there's an emergency and we've got to evacuate the city immediately. They'll be closing the gates in just a few moments. All right, but like, what kind of emergency? Because I'm not giving up my free continental breakfast for some ruptured gas line or something like that. Right? It, it's a demonic zombie apocalypse. It's to do what now? Yeah. Oh, guys, I see how that could throw you for a loop. Basically, in accordance with a very liberal interpretation of Jewish scripture, the dead are um, uh, rising from the ground, uh, sprouting demon wings, and turning oh. the living into undead zombies with their venom. All right. All right. Well, what are they doing according to Christian scripture? The same thing. I, I, I don't know if I believe you. I think he's lying. <laughs> Look, you can see it right here on CNN. Fake news. Yep. Fake. Bloomberg? Fake news. Yep. Al Jazeera? Fake terrorist news. Yep. I... <laughs> Look, here's a confirmation online from your own American Center for Disease Control. That's probably a bunch of bullshit. Obvious bullshit. <laughs> there you go. See, there's one right now. Okay. Okay. But how do we know he didn't have a pre-existing condition? Right? What condition would predispose you to become a demonic zombie? Well, have they tried ivermectin? Or the hydroxy clerb cler the, the blur yeah, hydroxy, whatever. Or or pull them up self by, by the bootstraps. Get some bootstraps. Yeah, bootstraps. You know what? Never mind. You can stay. Damn right, we can stay. Try to cheat me out of my continental breakfast. Absolutely not. <laughs> I, I don't speak Arabic, but I ain't got no change. <laughs> no change. <laughs> <laughs> At least I didn't have to suck anyone's dick in this one. Dude. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Well, we don't know what that demon was doing, you know. <laughs> All right, All Raycon right. added. Somehow Andrew's got to suck a dick. We're going to improv. Yes. This <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the gang fleeing from the city. Uh, no particular destination in mind. And and Sarah. She starts yelling at the Israeli officers, right? Calling them a bunch of fucking assholes and shit for leaving her at the asylum. <laughs> Things I do not recommend. Screaming, fuck you, and shoving an Israeli soldier. There you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to go well. <laughs> right. But here's the thing is that, like, they did stop at the asylum and they didn't get out of the gate. Right. And it's her fault. Yes. Like, if they had just run to the <laughs> gate, they'd be on the outside right now and yes. totally free from. Yeah. Right. She condemned them to die in the zombie apocalypse. She doesn't get to be mad at them right now. <laughs> so. To save Indiana Kev. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they're running to, like I guess, to try to go to another gate. And suddenly a body falls down right in front of them. And they look up and there's this demon standing on the roof and he's going like sorry could say little help you guys it's throw that body back up i was i wasn't done with that yet <laughs> this is the first of many demons that just like do a bad thing but not really and then they just look at you and they're like I believe i've made my point i'm a demon <laughs> <laughs> menace 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 he flies off and she goes rachel says wait these fuckers can fly and i'm like what did you <laughs> think the wings were doing 
I, I legitimately laughed out loud at those fuckers can fly. Oh, God. Fly house? It was yeah. So good. So they run into a church or a temple or a mosque. I don't fucking know. They run into a holy place to hide for a bit. And and Kevin comes up to Sarah and he's like, hey, thank you so much for getting me out of my cell at the asylum. I'm like, that is the safest place you've been since this started. Yeah. <laughs> That was super cool of you. So in terms of titles, are we saying like, what, boyfriend, girlfriend? (laughs) (laughs) Smart glasses are like, it's complicated. Yeah. (laughs) I don't like labels. So yeah. So And then Rachel goes up to the soldiers and she's like, you know, I demand you explain the goddamn plot of this movie to me right now. We're in the third fucking act. Right. And the first soldier goes, there's nothing to be afraid of. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, a literal demon just dropped a dead body in front of you while you were running for your life. It's way too late for there's nothing to be afraid of. Everybody relax. Come on, (laughs) Americans. This is Yom Kippur. It's Yom Kippur, man. (laughs) You got to be ready for that. (laughs) Respect our custom. Yeah, yes. yes. So, but soldier number two is going like, you know, there's a lot of shit about zombie apocalypses in the Talmud, man. There's a lot of zombie prophecies. And the first soldier's like, dude, shut up with your religious bullshit. These are secular Yom Kippur demons. <laughs> <laughs> That's the actual argument, though. That's not an exaggeration. And meanwhile, Omar still can't get over the generational oppression of his people. God, just get along, guys. Coexist already, right? Okay, I did love that he just tosses one of the Israeli soldiers here. He gets mad <laughs> and he throws him like 400 feet across this church down the aisle. It was so good. He does. He does. More specific things I do not recommend, <laughs> particularly if you're Muslim. Yeah, yeah. right. Punching an Israeli soldier, to, <laughs> you know, yeah. So, yeah, so Omar and the soldier get into a fight. And since that constitutes something happening, the glasses fritz out immediately when it starts and we yep. hurry over to the next scene. That scene is going to be Rachel and Sarah having a are we going to survive conversation? Right. Rachel says we're going to make it out of this the way we always do. <laughs> the way we what? always do. They have a history of they've they've made it out of zombie situations or that line Jerusalem? is like the fucking petunias in Hitchhiker's Guide thinking right. not again. <laughs> what is going I want so bad to know what she's referencing there. All right. And here's your towel from panic. <laughs> so, but then Omar's dad says, "Hey, you know what?" We randomly introduced a bunch of caves earlier in the movie. That's how we're going to get out. We can get out underground through the maze of dark tunnels. Yeah. And everybody's like, that's a great idea. <laughs> you got, no, no. I'm on team Rachel. Who's like, I am not going into those fucking caves. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. And, oh, and this is where Rachel sees something. And she's like, guys, check this out. I think I'm not sure, but it looks like the Israeli military is Maybe losing a fight to the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man? It's really, <laughs> There's a blurry the kaiju. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think these are supposed to be, you know, said Nephilim that you yes. know, yeah. we, we got uh, for Absolutely. Some. But like the Bible's really, really clear. Like the Nephilim are nine feet tall and these are the Cloverfield monsters. Yes, right. right. Like yeah. Uh-huh. Right. No, we get half a second of like the, the green giant handing you some peas or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> So. And but then there's a demon pop scare. Who, mm-hmm. A demon like runs right in front of Rachel, just outside the door of the church. And again, the, the demon's just like, demon, 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 demon. <laughs> All right, that's enough. That's enough. Yeah, you, I, I made my point. I've made. My point. <laughs> Actually, she. He, we, we'll find out later. The demon did scratch her fatally at that moment. We just don't know that yet. Yeah. Right. So. Everybody's going to argue in a foreign language uh, and Rachel's going to yell, what are you guys talking about for a while? The filmmaker's pretty sure that that bit works. And then they run off to the caves, but they stop fucking inexplicably, right? They just stop mid run and everybody's like, oh, don't worry. We're only 600 feet from the cave. We're just going to stop here for suspense. And then we're going to reveal that Rachel has been demon scratched in that moment. Oh, right. And they're like, hey, Rachel, did you get bit by a zombie demon? You kind of have to tell us. It's like a big deal. Yeah. (laughs) And she's like, what? (laughs) I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, the bite mark right here. Is that what you're talking about? This really big. Yeah. Uh, No, no, that is already there. I had it. (laughs) Omar, when we fucked. 
so is part of the zombification process lying about the zombification? I was so confused. Ooh, maybe here. that makes sense. Actually, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, no, for survival mecha- as a survival mechanism, it's just like COVID. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, but so we're gonna go into that tired ass zombie trope of yeah. Okay, your friend has been eaten by a, or bit by the zombie is definitely going to turn into a zombie at some point now. But you, the main character, are going to fight against killing them in advance. Yeah. And Rachel's like, I'm fucking fine. And they're like, all right. All right. No, she's- <laughs> We're going to let this go for a little while longer. Yeah. I've seen owls turn their head that far before. It's fine. <laughs> it's normal. <laughs> and and uh, right about now is right where I tap out because this is where the uh, SFX guy is like, oh, yeah. Um, what, do, do, should I set the air raid siren to nine? No, ten. Ten. <laughs> Definitely a, a ten. And I'm going to, you know, don't lean go, on what? go to the bathroom. Don't yeah. lean on what? I can't hear you over the sound of the air raid siren button I'm leaning on. Yeah. <sighs> Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. So question on this. When do you kill your friend during the slow transition to zombie that you know is happening? Like, what's the what's the line on that? Yeah, no, it's good to have that conversation now because it's going to be really awkward if you try to have it in the moment. Yeah, right a fucking way. Yeah, so, Sarah thinks the etiquette that she's established on this is kind of late. Yeah, they <laughs> should not have done that. Right. So, yeah. So, but then we fuck it. We cut to Kevin and Sarah having an are we going to survive conversation? Right. And Kevin's like, you know, I really think that we should tell everybody that Rachel Ray has been Eamon bit day. You know? yeah. <laughs> I saved you from a demon asylum. Fuck you. Right. Well, that's what Sarah's like. She's We're like, she's like, late. you owe me. I saved your ass. And I'm like, first of all, you're counting pre chickens here. Ain't nobody in this right. group saved at this point. Right. right. But secondly, she's over there vomiting, man. Like, they're, no, they're not worms yet, but she's over there vomiting already. So. There's one worm that's like kind of evil looking, but not <laughs> a full demon worm. Oh, that's the worm from Labyrinth. She'll be fine. It's going to be, it's, uh, it's going to be all right. <laughs> so yeah, but then the soldier realizes that Rachel has been demon bit and he's like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and shoot her in the head right now and here. I'm not usually team Israeli soldier who wants to shoot her in the head right now, but in this instance, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, but everybody else has immediate strong opinions on the timing of a demon <laughs> zombie virus and how right, that works yes. and how long etiquette wise you are supposed to wait. So Omar actually pulls a gun on that soldier. He gets the drop on him and he's like, don't shoot her. Well, yeah, Kevin stands in front of the gun and he's like, don't shoot her. And he's like, I'll shoot through you. And Omar's like, I'll shoot you for shooting through him. And it's like, wow, this is getting complicated. Well, hold on. Let me draw a chart. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, oh, you know what? I got to take you and the gun back across the river together, and this the, and it all it all adds up. Okay, one of the vomit worms just flew away. We're shooting her, right? Like this is clearly a uh, worm can't just fly away. But then, just then, a full on demon demon shows up in front of them, and they're like, "Okay, we all agree that we can shoot this one, though, right?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the demon, by the way, he just kind of stands there for a really long time. For like a he's, long time, like he's yeah. he's buffering or something. He's like, no, sorry, you guys finish your conversation. I feel like you were talking yeah. about the etiquette of, uh, uh, we'll do the fight in a second. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> well, and, and like one of the soldiers like timidly shoots him. And he looks up like, well, that was an asshole thing to do. And they shoot him again. And then he attacks. Okay. right, And, and, and he fast zombie attacks. Right. And they they eat your heart out. So the the fast zombie attacks one of the soldiers and eats the still beating heart out of his chest. But then again, because these are like these are the JV zombies still. We haven't like <laughs> got to the, like the A team. So he just like eats the heart and then they you know they get full for a few hours. So yeah, just like, right, right. Because everybody else gets away just fine. Yeah, the rest of you guys can take off. I'm just oh, I'm really tired. And so Heath says he eats the still beating a heart out of his chest. I want to be super clear that what we're talking about is he eats the still blurry blur out of his blur, right? But, <laughs> yes. That, but yes, that's. I think that's what they're going for. But so like, I got the impression that they, because they then they like unload on him, like they go full machine, like full fully auto on the demon, and he dies. Yeah, you should start with that one. Oh, do they shoot him? Okay, that makes yeah. it a little better, a little better sense. So like one bullet didn't wait. So that's their, like they've got the Joker strategy. Oh, well, let's bring out the bazooka now that the machine gun didn't work kind of a thing, right? Because they're like one bullet. No, how about two bullets? All right. What about a bunch of, a bunch of bullets? Okay. All right. It works. 
it works there. That's kind of like how Voltron should always start off with the blazing sword. Right, right? exactly. Like, why, yes. why have you, you know, yeah, edged for 23 minutes here? Just right. use the force push right away. Act one, force push. Yeah, exactly. Ugh. So, okay. So they shaky cam their way into the mines and I'm like, oh, good, underground. I was just thinking this was too well lit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The air raid sirens are still going They're on. They're underground now. There's such a They're good reason not. for us not to be able to hear them now. But uh, yeah. We should almost have Morgan put that as a backlay audio. <laughs> oh my just, God. just to give you an idea of how crazy 28 minutes of that is. Yeah. Just to be clear, <laughs> yeah, Morgan, please don't do that. So. Don't do that. <laughs> please do not. Yeah. We, we'd like to keep our listeners. Thanks. There's also like a, a weird attempt at a jump scare of the suit of armor. That was down there before. Sure, why not? <laughs> it's so weird. And then say, and and you're like, man, they've gone to a lot of weird ass trouble to introduce this suit of armor. And Sarah's like, I'm taking the sword from it. Now, there will never be a reason for that, right? Like she'll it, she won't later have the sword, and that will save the day or anything, right? The smart glasses could have been like. This is the sword of King David that was used to slay the zombie in the whatever side tale from Jeremiah. But no, nothing. It's yeah. just, a, just a sword that has no reason to be there with armor. Again, that has no reason to be there. Exactly. So she takes the sword. We shaky cam into the mines. But now with flashlight beams, it's even better. <laughs> Rachel is getting more and more demon-y the whole time. There's like there's like one of these moments of like, hey, back of Rachel's head. Can you turn around? Do you, know, do you have any jump scares on your face? Would you mind turning around and see if we have any? <laughs> and of course, she's got the zombie eyes now, which it's, they're all black is what, is what they go for. Nothing creative to see here. And even Rachel at this point is like, Okay, well, obviously you kill me at this point. My eyes are fully demons, right? You still, we're, I, I'm way along. No, no, it's cool. Why don't you just tell us when you're feeling 90% demon? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you are now. But, uh, just give us, give, give me a little uh, elbow nudge at, at 90. Perfect. And I like, as, even as she walks away, Soldier 2 is like, she's 87 and a half, right? I mean, we were going to just yeah. go ahead and fucking shoot her, right? I mean, what the, what the fucking hell? And then we hear demon growls echoing around in the mines. Now, I feel like you know, if I'm a predator, I'm going to keep my echoey screaming to a minimum. <laughs> but, and to whatever extent I don't, I feel like I get less scary. But sure, demon growls all over the place. We do the fucking Rachel turn around. Let me see if there's any new jump scares on your face bit again. Right. Like two minutes later. This time, though, Rachel's full on demon and she demon attacks Sarah. Well, sorry, I'm assuming a lot here. A lot of <laughs> camera shake goes on and then eventually the glasses are on the ground, right? Right. And we're looking upside down and up. Yeah, the glasses fall off and the movie commits to that bit. And I was very excited. I was like, okay, that is committing. Like if the rest of the movie was just noises getting further away and you can't <laughs> for like half an hour, respect. That would have been good. Fair. But instead we watched Fucking demon Rachel pulling herself across the ground for a while. And she like manages to say, God damn it, run away. It's super duper obvious that I'm demon beyond repair. This whole bit is really falling apart now. Are you at 90? Do you hear my fucking <laughs> voice right now? Yes, I'm at 90. Go. <laughs> I sound like Heath doing Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Come on, obviously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, but but she still doesn't, Sarah still doesn't do it, right? So Demon Rachel walks a few steps away, sprouts demon wings, and then shoots herself in the head. Yeah. Again, with the, with the whole, like, you know, I opened the peanut brittle and the wings came out kind of a motion <laughs> thing. Right. You know? I mean, the wings really don't matter down here in tiny little dark caves, but... I guess sprouting the wings are like the bright line of that's, like, yeah, you know, that's the 90 percent when you can line. like abort a demon. <laughs> so, OK. And then Sarah grabs the sword and she's going to defend herself FPS style. Oh God. <laughs> this looks exactly like the screen, the user interface from Eye of the Beholder. Right, right like yeah. You just, yeah, see your sword sticking out. <laughs> exactly, in a way that no one would use a sword, yeah. Right. Oh. <laughs> she starts looking around, and this is honestly, this is the cleverest they ever got with the 
smart glasses because like as she met people throughout the thing a little little symbols of a mouth and eyes would come up as as they're doing the facial recognition so now she's looking around in the dark and there's little facial rig- recognition symbols showing up all around her but she can't see them right yeah and if they didn't look like little smiley faces that could have been creepy yeah. yeah just a reminder about the context this is god's Big party for Yom Kippur because his yes. son is coming back, <laughs> according to scripture. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't think the people that wrote this movie had the son coming back part in mind, but yes. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Their religion's wrong, though. I mean, well, well, Christianity's <laughs> the, the correct one. So. so anyway, so so Sarah shakes her USA. sword around for a little while, and then she just stabs out, and it turns out that the other end of that stab was Omar's dad's throat. Uh, and so who could, what could possibly go wrong when you're just like <laughs> stabbing randomly in a group of people <laughs> right. running for an exit in the dark? You know you're in a group of people. It's not like they just happened upon her. Now, I will say, you know, you don't you, you make a little noise as you're walking up to your friends That's during true. the That's zombie a, apocalypse. Right? There's at least fair. some of the blame belongs to him. I'm just going to swing this sword around. And if <laughs> you come too close, that's your too bad. Like, <laughs> <laughs> relax. But yes, but she fatally stabs him in the fucking throat. He's not a zombie or a demon at this point, by the way, just to be super clear. And then Omar comes up and he's like, what the what the fuck are you? Did you, did you just stab the first thing that moves? She's like, I just stabbed the first thing that moves. I'm really so sorry. sorry about that. I announced that I was doing stabs in my wheelhouse area. <laughs> and he got in it. <laughs> so, yeah. So, they, you know, she apologizes. They all, well, they all, it's now it's Omar, Kevin and her. They run off. They all pray in their own way. You know, she's doing Jewish. I guess Kevin is doing Christian and Omar is doing Muslim. Now, he's the wrongest, so at the end of his prayer, he shoots himself in the mouth. Why does he shoot himself? Uh, because because that character was played out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, All right, then. No idea. Because I get it. Like, the grief of, you know, you uh, you just killed my dad. I don't want to live. But, like, there's a, there's, there's a two-minute cooling off period. <laughs> I, I, I feel like, honestly, what happened is, I, I believe the movie was made by... Israeli people and they were like yeah we're trying to be you know nice about both sides and hippy dippy but there's no Omar should have been the hero at the end of this and they were like that's not fucking happening we're not, yeah, we're, yeah. <laughs> we're not we're gonna, Muslims not gonna live I'm sorry right so yeah so we watch her watch Kevin be scared for a fucking while and then he's like hey you know we're hiding from demons and you still have a light on your hat and she's like right light on my hat that's dumb shouldn't have that <laughs> now of course at this point she could be like you know, glasses turn on night sight or turn on, you know, infrared or something like that, but they didn't have the budget for anything like that. So we just literally watched the darkness for like 45 seconds now. It'd be funny if the video from Thriller came up here. Again, great zombies. time for the Japanese cats, <laughs> right? Another great moment that they missed. Yeah. But then, okay, so we watched darkness for a little while. And then a demon turns on the light and the facial recognition on her glasses <laughs> kicks in and pegs the demon. It turns out it's her brother as a demon. Very convenient time for the Wi-Fi to come back on. In, this clip <laughs> so that, you know. in the middle of the mine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, and also, like, where did he die? As he just he, he, what did he he came back from the dead and then flew across an ocean or even worse got on a plane. Yeah, they they live in like Chicago right. or something. Yes. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, her her prayer was answered. It's her brother, very monkey poshly. Although there's got to be this moment where she's like, "Oh fuck, God read the letter where I called him an asshole." Jesus Christ, ah, oh, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> but demon brother shows them the way out of the mine. He's like, oh, no, I got you. I got you. I'll, I'll take care of you. So is he a good demon or is he an angel that looks all fucked up because he went to hell, but then God brought him out of that to make him a, an angel? Like, what is what is he? What hey, are they look, saying it's he is? more thought than the writers put into it. I just yeah. right there. Yeah. I, who the fuck knows? He's a good demon as far as I can tell. Or maybe good. Maybe all the demons are good because they are doing God's oh, will. Oh, that point. would that sure. would be an interesting twist to the movie that never happened. Yeah, right. right. Like, 
the demons are like what the fuck are these people doing like we're just here to try and clean up the like you know mines down here and <laughs> guys the political situation here is ridiculous i'm a goddamn demon <laughs> You all need to calm down. We need to clean up the mines. We need to do a shared state. Just relax. I mean, if you think about it, yeah, like we don't know, like that one guy could have just fallen off the roof trying to run from the demon. Yeah. And the only person we've seen him kill is that Israeli soldier who, cut, you know, kind of had it coming. I mean, <laughs> death to the occupier. <laughs> so, so, but yeah, so she weepily tells demon brother how much she misses him. And Kevin's like, look, there's no non awkward way for me to say, could you leave your demon brother alone and escape this cave with me but I have to say that now <laughs> right <laughs> so they escape I spent like a minute and a half trying to clean some schmutz off my fucking screen that turned out was in the movie <laughs> <laughs> motherfuckers and then as though the movie was saying look I know you guys are all trying to take notes onto the same Google doc and this movie doesn't have distinct scenes like most movies do. The glasses randomly tell us that it's 5.40 a.m. now, right? <laughs> Scene cue, 5.40 a.m. There you go. <laughs> right, right. There's one for you, which is, which is fucking weird because it shouldn't be, right? It was <laughs> Anyway, yeah, but they made it. They, they get to the a exit from the mines or whatever, but there's like a, a gate chained closed at the end. Right. So Kevin goes to work on the lock with, I guess, his muscles. Like, we don't ever see what he's doing. The Foley guy definitely has metal on metal sounds here. But, like, unless he's Wolverine, like, <laughs> I don't know where that's coming right. from. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because she still has the sword. Right. <laughs> she's been carrying that with her the whole time. We see now that she's still got it. And now she's like choking and turning all demon voiced. She and she tries to call her dad, and the glasses are like, "Sorry, I don't recognize your voice. Do you have a cult? Do you uh, a little horse there, something like that? <laughs> a little late zombification? Can't? Yeah, right, right, exactly. So Kevin breaks open the lock with his manliness, with his Hulk powers or whatever, and he's like, "Come on, let's go." And she's like puking worms and shit, and he's like, "Could you please stop puking worms long enough for us to get out of these fucking demon mines?" <laughs> He's, he's bizarrely unaware as she chokes and, and, and gurgles and spits and shit and turns into a demon. He is bizarrely unaware. of it. I mean, I guess given what we've seen from Kevin so far, that's that tracks, right? Yeah. So they get outside and he looks over and he's like, yeah, so you're you're about to go full demon. Does, do we have time for a blowjob or no? Obviously, <laughs> obviously we don't. I, I'm sorry. No, why, that's why did it, Why would I even bring that up? And then she she goes full demon and she flies off but of course in the first person right we're, we're seeing this through the glasses so we just see the glasses sort of just lift off out of the <laughs> off the ground a little bit from our perspective what we get are what look like very long eyelashes that kind of like flutter <laughs> yes. in the front focus <laughs> that i think are supposed to be those foldy uppy wings but yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and we hear the flap flap as she get, and i gotta say you know for a first time flyer she's killing it she's doing really good very uh, just downright Harry Potter esque in in her naturalness with it. So I have an impertinent question. Um, what was the point of dead brother, good demon rescuing her in the very last scene? Right, right. If she's going to turn into a demon anyway, hmm. if she's going to turn into a demon thirty seconds later, I think they're saying. I think it's your theory from before that it's actually all good demons. The demons are the good guys. All um, right, all right. She's yeah. going to join the demon crew now, right? And she's going to bring smart glasses and they're going to be like, oh, shit, that's like a really useful technology for a flying demon. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the, that's the the good team. Yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Because like she goes to fly up and then she looks over and there's like a whole army of Siemens that are all like, you know, issuing for flying up from from Jerusalem or whatever. So, yeah, it looks like. Looks like they're about to kick some ass for the first first point of order. We're going to license the Iron Dome technology to Ukraine, <laughs> right? Like we're all in on that, right? <laughs> all right, I'll tell you what. We made it to the finish line, and none of us vomited from the camera work. At least not during this record. So I'm going to call that a win. But Andrew, before you we let you go, could you remind our audience where they can hear more from you? 
Yeah, you already know opening arguments. If you haven't checked out Clean Up on Aisle 45, the uh, political show that I do with Allison Gill on Wednesdays, it's delightful and I swear. So, you know, those those tend to be things people like. So uh, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> Delight and Andrew swear. And fuck yeah. And of course, we'll have those linked in the show notes as well. Andrew, thank you so much for helping out today. Absolutely. And well, that's going to do it for our review of Jerusalem. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still have another spooktacle for next week. So, Heath, tell us what's <laughs> on deck. From the makers of The Badge, The Bible, and Bigfoot. We're going back to that well already. We have Halloween Hero. Fuck yeah, we do. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 375 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Andrew Torres for all the help and an even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Alias, Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Card available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot, even dressed on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work harder or another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Kevin went the rest of his life and never, ever, ever had a girl willing to go down on him in a men's room again. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else in this movie died, so it's really hard to do a follow-up. <laughs> the giant flocks of rabid zombie demons it was a little chaotic but overall the political tension in the region really settled down nicely <laughs> they were it good night out. good guy demons I thought so long about who should be sucking whose dick between yeah. the two of you in, in that sketch. <laughs> All right. So is it just, just artistically, do I want Andrew sucking Noah's dick? Noah <laughs> sucking Andrew's. I really spent a long time. Mm -hmm. I no, hope no. you weren't offended by it. I had to pick one. I had to pick one. Yeah, it was, it was, really hard. It was uh, fucking Sophie's choice over you here. Could, so. you, could, I, you could have been the dick sucker, though, in this yeah, right. like, Somebody else say, could have been. It didn't just have to be me and Noah. Right, right. Yeah, there was the third <laughs> We could option. all take turns. Okay? We could I, all I, suck I each other's like, dicks, actually. I want to be the benevolent <laughs> sketch writer, you know, like I step out. Like somebody else gets their dick sucked if I'm writing, you know. It's just Well, you didn't have courtesy. to be. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like Morgan's experience right now. Right. This is a cold. This right. is just a, he has <laughs> no open. idea what we're talking <laughs> about. <clears throat> There's he's, a graphic sketch about some some fellatio that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> All you know is Andrew good, and Noah. It's a good sketch. I mean, a lot of foreshadow. All right, uh, here we go. Oh shit! That was so weird. I heard Heath on four and just Andrew on five. <clears throat> I heard the train in the background on both. Yeah, so yeah, apologies. Me and Andrew that. doing a couple's answering machine together. Right. <laughs> Hi, you've reached Andrew. And Heath. <laughs> We're not home right now. <laughs> so leave a message <laughs> after the beep. We love you. See, I Bye. used to have such good answering machine messages. Honestly, now that I think about it, that's when my love for podcasting began. The first time I had my own answering machine and I had a message that was just like, me pretending I didn't know how I was like, I was going like yelling at my wife. How the fuck do you even make it work? I don't even know how to, <laughs> this thing is a piece of beep, you know? And then that was, <laughs> was that, and from that moment on, I'm like, yep, me and recorded audio. This is you have to bad. put the VCR on channel three. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Believe it or not. <laughs> Leave a message. My wife had no idea that was from a TV show. Oh, <laughs> greatest American hero. We need to bring that show back, man. Uh, and, and, I, I, and, I, and, how have they not done that? Yeah. yeah. The, and, and in this version, he needs to be the one that shoots Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want a version of Seinfeld where George is the one who shoots Reagan now. Okay. All right. Sure. Because it's much more heroic now. Like in retrospect, yeah. you look back on it, you're like, you know what? Hinckley was really... He was doing us all a favor. Jody Foster really owes him a date. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs>
<laughs> Hinkley's a time traveler. That's good stuff. That's yeah, just right. Unambiguously positive. Yeah. All right, here we go. Just like Michigan OSU, the basically, right? <laughs> Middle East, same thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shots. Interstitial two. <laughs> <laughs> Interstitial two. Mm, okay, well, let's see that penis. Unzipping noise. <laughs> I'm so happy Andrew said that. <laughs> this entire show, the entire podcast has just been a fucking ruse so that we could get audio of Andrew saying that. No, unzipping noise. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022.